Alrighty, one, two, three, testing sound, seems like it's all good. Good day, good time of the day or night for all you viewers. Welcome to Bud Nixon channel. Uh, if you're a first timer, I recommend that you look through the channel to just kind of comprehend things that are going around and what this channel is about. This is a lifestyle, sh lifestyle channel. I post anything and everything uh, starting from trips, overlanding, off-road, shop work of all sorts, fabrication, metal, uh, wood, uh, craft, uh, and any all sorts of kind of things. Uh, I basically run just through with anything that I can find uh, out of my home shop, uh, hobby-wise, along with everything that I do in the shop. So, welcome to the channel. Again, look through and you kind of get the feel for what's going on. If you haven't subscribed yet, I recommend that you subscribe. You might miss the next good channel. I try to post videos as they kind of come along and you as a viewer have opportunity to, um, how do you say, incentivize me uh, to post more videos. So um, basically, thank you for checking it out. Thank you for viewing, subscribing, sharing, commenting, liking, and all that good stuff. So today's video is going to be very basic, very simple. Uh, might be a little bit long, but today's video will be about a propane stove fitting. It's a specific one to the fitting. Uh, why? Uh, I will go into my own explanation. Uh, so stay tuned and I think you'll get the point of what's going on. So let's flip the camera over to the other side. What I'm working with is a drawer system uh, in the back of my vehicle. So if you look back to the videos uh, prior, you will see that I'm building a Nissan R50 Pathfinder uh, base, uh, which is actually Infiniti QX4, but it's pretty much the same thing. I'm working with a drawer system and I wanna make a quick kitchen setup breakdown process, right? So that's what we're working with. So one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to utilize a propane quick fitting for those who are familiar with the shop stuff, it's like just like the air nozzle for your air hoses. But this is an RV uh, propane fitting, and I want to utilize that to connect really quickly to my stove. Now, I do understand the fact that you can just use your regular quick um, connection for a, just a propane bottle, but I do not use for my stove in general. I do not use uh, this type of a setup. I do not use the green can, which is this. I do not like to use this other than maybe for a torch uh, or for a lantern. So I can be more, um, I don't know, convenient to carry around the smaller cell of fuel, we'll put it that way. Right. So for something like this, it's uh, obvious because you want to be able, you don't want to carry around a, a 20 pounder or 10 pounder like in the case here, uh, or a five pounder or whatever pounder, large can other than maybe this one pounder. This one is convenient. So for propane torch itself and for a propane light, like the camping light lantern, uh, this is very convenient. And this is all just, just different topic, different conversation. Here is the conversation about the stove. So when I'm overlanding or I'm on my vehicle traveling uh, off-road, on-road, whatever, camping, we'll just call it that way, um, I like to be able to use my propane in bulk uh, for those who monitor current fuel pricing. Uh, it's a lot cheaper. Uh, right now, in the spring of 2022, these go anywhere from on sale maybe eight bucks to up to 15, I've seen them. In a convenience store so 15 bucks for just one propane tank uh, of one pounder um, I believe it's about four bucks a gallon so that's quite a bit of fuel so I think four bucks versus 12 bucks well actually 12 times 4 would be 48 roughly so you're talking about like a $10 versus $50 cost so just trying to be you know efficient with your finances if that makes sense plus convenience is also a factor because this runs out and then you have to look for another one well that can last you about a week for cooking at least probably so 
The goal was to make this connection that comes into the back of a camp stove like this. This is a Camp Chef Everest model. The reason I went with this one specifically is because it has 20,000 BTU per burner, which is quite a bit. And uh, especially when you're doing a high elevation camps, like in my case, when I travel throughout higher elevation areas, uh, you want to have more BTUs to heat up water faster too. Pardon the interruption there. Anyway, uh, so the goal is basically to be able to use this stove with that throughout the quick fitting because what I found over my years of use and everybody's experience is different we're talking about only about my experience now as I'm you know doing the video my experience has been that these are somewhat flimsy and if you completely all the time you know threading it on and off and off and what I'm talking about you have to keep in mind that in my experience uh, when I travel this stove gets broken down twice a day or put together twice a day so basically i set up camp once a day and once a day i break it down so twice a day this fitting will be connected and disconnected right so to prevent all that excessive use on those nimble or easily breakable fittings um, i thought maybe there's a better way and which is apparently available and which is the quick fitting so just like this like I said once again right here and it's done right so the problem that I've ran into and the reason for this video is that the fitting that comes on such which are uh, black something I'm gonna put it into comments below so this is a regular RV fitting and this remove it I guess uh, let me get a tool to do so so these two fittings are different and I'm gonna try to do my best to show you this on the camera you can see that the thread step is different this is much finer thread this is the original fitting. I already retrofitted it, but this is the original fitting that came with the stove. Now this was the fitting that came on this elbow originally. And you could tell again that it has a larger, let's see if you get the camera zooms in, get the focus right. It's larger one, right? Smaller, larger. So when you buy this, from Amazon, and I will put a link all to all these parts. When you buy this fitting with a quick release already from Amazon, it comes with this one here, which is larger, and this one will not go on here. No matter what you do, it just, it won't. So, in the end, what do we have to do? We have to retrofit it somehow, right? And if you look at the thread on the tip of this, this is a 5430, parts are falling. So this is a 5430 regulator. They call it the Coleman 5430. This is a regulator that comes with that stove or pretty much any camp stove that made that is made to work with the one pound can. So in order to make it fit, what I end up doing is just like with this one here, on this fitting you're able to remove this end you need to match that thread onto the fitting here to do that you gotta utilize an m8 three-quarter thread die and i know i'm getting a little technical but this is specifically for those who have been looking how to do it and I bet you every, each and every one of us has that handy dandy guy that can do these things. Because if you can't, they can. So something like this is available at your reg regular, probably tool store or just Harbor Freight. You can buy one of these. It's very simple because brass is very easy to thread. 
So the goal was to remove this part along with that stem on this elbow. And when you remove it, this elbow will have the thread that is just like that. But it's, as you can see, it has a bigger step in there, I'm assuming. So it kind of goes on there, but as you see, it if you don't force it, it stops right there. It doesn't go through all the way because the threads are different. So all it takes is slight turn of this tool on the fitting on this elbow to re-thread it. The brass is very soft, very easy to do the saw. Once that is done, you can remove this this tip here with that stem there or with that piece there. They remove off of this guy and then they will just thread right on there. And if you look through, what we have is the insides are different. So the inside of this one, it has that kind of thing. And that one has a almost same piece like your tire, deflate, tire, tire nozzle does. So the idea, again, is to fit the two. And when you have those fittings done, make sure you seal it right when you put the thread on. I recommend using a uh, thread like a red high strength I believe that was used on this originally as well but this one does just as good as a Teflon tape in my opinion um, and in any case just it's enough because this is not a uh, house fitting where it's just left on all the time so there's an issue of any leaks and this device here is normally used in a good ventilated area so once we have done that and we've accomplished this again we can go back to the bigger can of uh, propane. So let's see how that works. So we apply the fitting on here, screw it on somewhat tight, quick fitting. You turn it on here. In my case, I'm, I'll put the link on Amazon for this. So one thing to keep in mind is you have to get a hose that is 20 to 30 psi pressure this one in my case comes with a gauge even and i have found that i believe that these stoves do not run under high pressure probably 5 psi or so don't hold me to the numbers but we open up the propane here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna crank it to about 15 so that's right about there so this is open here the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the camera up on a tripod. All right. So next what we're doing is we're going to test the stove. So first one, you can hear the propane coming out. Boom. And I think by, so this, this regular to here will, this guy here obviously controls, but I believe, I'm not sure if I'm doing it, but this is, so this is a common sense thing. Uh, considering that the burner is 20,000 BTU, if you crank it up to 30 PSI here, uh, you're just going to be overheating the whole stove. I mean, the whole stove will run too hot and you will start damaging things. So this is something, you know, use your common sense. In my opinion, what I have found right now up to this point is that roughly 15 PSI here on the dial gives you enough propane to run things as warm as you need to and warm your water as fast as you want to kind of thing. If you want to test it out and crank this up to 30 PSI, and let this guy run on full blast at 30 PSI, you might heat up your water or your whatever contents of the pot faster, but there's a good chance you're gonna be overheating things and causing damage to other components. So 
this is you know a disclosure where you use your common sense and don't do stupid things don't burn the place down so to speak so as you see you got a good fire good flame going right here plenty enough to do what you need to do again you're able to shut it off when you're done click connect done now number one question you're gonna say nixon why bother with a 90 degree quick fitting so two things i'm gonna address number one as as i mentioned is i do not want to be removing this guy on and off all the time i simply this is just my own personal choice i do not want to do this because i think the wear and tear on the brass and all the seals is just kind of pointless in my opinion another thing is when you're using this in here you're losing roughly eight inches of space on the side of your stove now for those who are using this stove as a countertop on a table or anything else uh, i'm guessing you're gonna be okay in my case again if you look through the videos that i've done on a drawer system i have about probably four maybe only six inches of space on the slide out that I did for the drawer system for the stove. So for me, spacing is very tight here. So I needed to have that done. That's probably number one reason for me before even the, the fact of the fitting being you know used all the time. So space consumption, number one. Number two, the goal is to have that can on a swing out uh, carrier on your on my rear bumper of the of the vehicle where the propane will be mounted. And I could just attach that very easily, very fast, very conveniently. So the whole uh, point is to be efficient on the setup. All right, so hopefully this video clears some uh, confusion and uh, shines some light for those who were looking for that same solution. No working, see the valve, you have to have that thing in. Uh, thanks for tuning in, good day, and until the next video, thank you.